When it comes to bookstores, I prefer small family-owned shops and always will. However, it is impossible not to recognize the overwhelming success that a small store out of Ann Arbor, Michigan enjoyed from the 1970s until the early 2010s. Let's take a look inside one of the most formative bookstore chains in the United States for several decades. This is the story of Borders. Borders was founded in 1971 by brothers Tom and Lewis Borders. Together, they initially started their business as a used bookstore, common at the time. The first Borders store was located in a small location near the University of Michigan, and it quickly gained a reputation for its diverse selection of books and a laid-back, customer-friendly environment. The brothers built their business by offering an impressive selection of books and cultivating a loyal clientele mostly made up of students and locals. Recognizing that there was room to grow, in 1975, Borders expanded their venture by opening a second store in Ann Arbor which was much larger, taking over an 80-year-old bookstore which had since gone out of business. The store was designed with a new approach to book selling. It emphasized a larger selection of books and a comfortable shopping environment. Borders wanted their customers to enjoy the book buying experience and feel almost at home in their stores. By the 1980s, Borders had big ambitions. In 1983, Borders partnered with the Walden Books chain, which allowed them to expand outside of Michigan. Borders stores were large and facilitated reading needs for shoppers from all varieties, from casual readers to devoted fans. By the early 1990s, Borders had become a viable competitor to Barnes & Noble and began offering music CDs, audiobooks, and movies as their brand became a household name in retail. In 1992, Borders went public on the New York Stock Exchange. By the mid-1990s, Borders was seemingly unstoppable with over 100 locations operating in the United States. In the late 1990s and early 2000s, Borders made an ambitious move to expand internationally. It opened its first store in the UK in 1998. This store was part of a larger global expansion initiative that included locations in Australia, Canada, and New Zealand. By 2000, Borders had established a significant international presence. Customers had become accustomed to the store's comfortable spaces for reading, enjoying snacks and coffee in their cafes, and perusing a wide selection of books from all genres, both new and classic. In addition to their brick and mortar stores, Borders was early to join an e-commerce having established their website by 1997. However, Barnes & Noble was able to have a much better online presence, and their site far exceeded what Borders online presence was capable of. As the 2000s continued, chains like Walmart were able to offer much lower prices on books, and e-businesses like Amazon were becoming wildly successful. Borders would see its sales peak in 2006 and then begin a steady decline. But it wouldn't be until the late 2000s when big changes would begin to take shape with Borders. The introduction of the e-reader completely revolutionized the way people read books with content being delivered at the tap of a button. Amazon released their first version of the Kindle in 2007, Barnes & Noble released their own version, the Nook, in 2009, and of course the Apple iPad that would provide Apple users with iBooks in 2010. Borders wouldn't open its first ebook store until July of 2010, but by that point, the top contenders in e-reading had been well established. The Kobo e-reader was playing catch-up while the Kindle, Nook, iPad, and other tablets had revolutionized the market. Borders was also facing having far more retail space than they needed as changes in physical media began. The company was leasing massive amounts of retail space as sales continued to rapidly decline. The company began taking drastic measures to stay afloat, closing stores, laying off workers, and delaying payments to publishers in an attempt to go back into the black. But it wouldn't be enough, and in February 2011, Borders filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection. The company began closing stores slowly, and by September of 2011, all operations within Borders had come to an end. 
Borders was a company that, like many others, were not able to adapt as quickly as they should have as technology advanced. It was obvious once e-readers became commonplace who was going to come out on top. As I record this video, the holiday season is approaching, and I encourage all of you to seek out your nearby family-owned bookstores and support them this season. Small businesses are the heartbeat of this country, and it's never been more important to show them your loyalty.